Hello and welcome everybody to the Weird World of Knowing. I'm Rachel Earing, your hostess for the day, and we're talking about all the really weird and strange things that happen to us throughout our lives that might put us on a path that we might not necessarily have been on, or the strange and wonderful things that come to us with these light bulb moments, epiphanies, um, and when things suddenly start to make sense in these jigsaw patterns of our own personal life. But it also could mean that sometimes we're on the wrong path and it might feel ooh, yucky and horrible. So we're going to be discussing all sorts of strange and wonderful things. And of course, the guest I've got today is an absolute delight. One who is from my hometown of Rochdale. So we've got two Rochdale girls here, born and bred. The beautiful, delightful Michelle Holmes. How are you? I'm all right. Yes. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm so How delighted you? to have you here. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So, Michelle, yeah. obviously you're an actor. You have been in so many things that I can't even begin to mention them all. So I'm just going to mention some of my favourites, if that's OK. Yeah. So, of course, the first thing that I ever saw you in was Rita, Sue and Bob too. And boy... <laughs> did that hit home on so many parts because being from Rochdale I think it's quite difficult to sort of not have any of that sort of hit home in in some sort of aspects especially you know when we were, were that age there was all sorts of things going on so yeah. that Rita Sue and Bob too was a real gritty northern look at life wasn't it and yes it is iconic absolutely iconic piece and and I suppose really do you get do you get a bit fed up of people still talking about it no never and I'm still shocked every day that um it, it goes on and I think every every week this will be the end and nobody will ever talk about it again and if we shot the film in was it 1986 and it went out in 1987 so how many years is that now um, too, well, many, too, too many, <laughs> not that too many, too many to go there. <laughs> but when you're talking about Rochdale, you know, obviously I grew up and I had a dream to be an actress. That's what I wanted to do. Although I was a kind of an introverted child mm. and I'm still an introverted extrovert. You know, I'm, I can be extremely quiet and shy. Um, but I remember my granddad driving me into Rochdale in his car. And as we went down, is it Drake Street, the one that goes into yes. Rochdale? Yeah. And as we went down from Kingsway, where my granddad lived, they I've still got the picture now where they put Michelle Holmes, because obviously the cinema must have known I'd come from Rochdale. Oh, yeah, so yeah. they put my name up in massive capital letters. Oh, wow. Michelle Holmes, Reed Soon, Bob and next to it was Eddie Murphy, da da da, and whatever. I think there was three. And I remember just bit, I just was like mortified because I am an introvert and shy, just like, oh, like, but yes. just. <laughs> That's you know, and my, I don't know, I can't even remember what my granddad must have done. I mean, that must have just been incredible for my granddad. Oh, gosh, yeah. He um, must have been so proud. Well, I think for me, my probably my first reaction was to, would be to get in the glove box. Do you know what I mean? And just shut <laughs> it all. You know. um, but, yeah, and I've got the picture, which every year when I do, like, me kind of yearly tidy, I always go through all my pictures. Oh, and, and there it is, and I see it again. And, uh, and I think, wow. You know that that little girl that kind of had that dream and 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 did it. You well, know. you know, before we move on to all the other things that we've done, can we just touch on that? Because obviously, you know, we've had conversations outside of of here, and I'm very aware of, gosh, what a driven person you are. You are an absolute force of nature, and you know, you get what you want, you know what you want, and... I'm driven, but then I also have that, uh, that belief that it'll be okay, it will, you know what I mean, it's that other thing, and we talked about that the other day, about what I used to call gold dust, yeah. and it wasn't until I read a book on cosmic ordering, years and years ago, that I read this little book, and when, and I think that was through the kind of Noel Edmonds thing with cosmic ordering, and right. all that kind of, I don't think it was his book, but it was a book, yeah. I think somebody gave it me and I remember thinking oh okay so I've been doing that since I was a, a little girl but I didn't know that that the power of attraction or cosmic or, or whatever you want to call it um existed yeah. I just did it naturally um yeah, and, and that's and that's perfect because that brings us completely onto the weird world of knowing because yeah. it's 
we, we do so many of these things naturally that we we're not doing it necessarily consciously as to, to why we're doing it and then we start to feel a little bit weird when other people aren't doing it and they're doing something else so just going back to you being that little girl and getting into acting and wanting to be you know on the screen and do what you're doing now can you give us a bit of how did you know what's this weird world of knowing these moments of knowing that i didn't really know that? i don't think i knew but other people did so what other what my nice because i'm still very good friends with everybody going back to the age of two like all my friends are still like on my facebook or you know we, we still connect everybody says you used to sign pieces of paper and go keep that because one day you know i'll be famous or whatever but it wasn't that kind of like i remember it wasn't that um x factor thing or that uh yeah. you know that kind of thing like oh I'm not saying that everybody goes on the X Factor. I know there's incredibly amazing, talented people, but it's that thing of now that they say that people just want to be famous, yeah. just for being famous. It, it wasn't about that. It was about I knew I was going to be an actor. That was it. I just knew, and maybe it was that. And I still have that. I'm 55 now, and I still I don't understand the word no. I just I don't, I don't understand it. It's so maybe that's I don't know. Well, that's yeah. a really fantastic gift to have in a way, because that word no restricts us in so many beliefs. It, it's other people's beliefs. It's yeah. our belief. And until we experience something that ourselves as to whether, well, is that a no or is that a yes? Can I do this? You only yeah. know through trying, don't you? Yes. So what and propelled you to you keep trying? You go down that road as well. Maybe you're not supposed to. And sometimes you do force it. Mm, and sometimes yeah. you do push it and I've learned through life as well maybe sometimes not to push things because that can lead down the wrong road so I don't know it's that gut mm. thing isn't it that gut feeling but as a child I, don't, I think it was complete innocence it was there was no thought behind it I didn't even know that existed yeah um, I didn't know about that until ooh, probably late 30s 40 yeah before that sort of you know the secret and the law of attraction and, and then it was like gosh I you know I I I and at that point I felt I knew about that yeah you know because all the things that happened in life and kind of when I lost my granddad I felt like that that whole sparkle of that seemed to disappear then yeah. I don't know there was like you know we get older and things happen in life and um so yeah so yeah. I'm going to ask you the really difficult question that I've been asking my guests now how do you know what are your signs, your signals, your thoughts, your feelings about, about being on the path that you're on? How did you know that you wanted to be an actor? At that oh, I just knew I wanted to be an actor from when I could stand up. It was the television. And um, then when I was very young, I went to a panto um, with my granddad with the British Legion. And I remember sitting there in the audience and going, oh, OK, so that's what I want to do. I want to be on that stage but uh, uh, every Sunday I go to the British Legion with my granddad and they'd get a child up to conduct the orchestra oh, I'd just cry if anybody pointed at me I'd just be horrified mm. I'd cry I'd be shaking no 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 please don't not me you know so um yeah again that introverted or is it an extroverted introvert I don't know um I've only just started reading about that and realizing that that that's who I am yeah which is weird because I am really shy when you first meet me. I can be quite quiet. Yeah. I can be the one that will go in the corner on my own, not into the group. Yeah. But and then but I'm the person that can also bring a group together. It's strange. Well, it depends how you're feeling, really, doesn't it? I I, I totally yeah. resonate with that because I'm I'm exactly the same. And it's I think it really does. Sometimes we've got to read the room, haven't we? We've got to see how yes. it feels. We've got to observe people, see what mm. How, how they're behaving do we like it do we resonate or not is it safe well I think going back for me it was Shirley Temple it was watching the Shirley Temple films the black and whites with my nan because my nan used to look after me in the holidays and at the weekends my yes. nan and granddad. so I'd watch all the old movies and all the Doris Day and all that kind of stuff I loved it but Shirley Temple really got me and I think at the beginning of the films they used to have the was it the Paramount studio yes. yeah. yeah and there were gates and I remember, obviously, we knew about Granada because we had to go to the news and everything. So I used to say to my mum, just take me to the gates. Just drop me off and I'll tell them that I'm good and I can do it. And I believed it. Yes. And I read all the Gemma books, which is about that little girl who wants to be an actress and goes to an acting school. So I used to read them. 
I read them and read them and read them. You know, I'd read the whole series of the books and then read them again. And I used to read poetry books and then, then I used to rehearse it and, re and learn the line. You know, I didn't even know you learned lines. I didn't know about scripts. I didn't know anything. I just used to learn poetry. And then I ended up going to various different acting groups. One was the Todd Hippodrome. Yeah. And we did Pinocchio there. And then we went to a Wakes workshop at Oldham Coliseum. And at the end, we got given like a ticket, which was joined theatre workshop. And that was my golden ticket, really. You know, that was the golden ticket to getting an agent and then going and moving forward to Granada when I was 16. Fantastic. And that was another dream. So there was the gates that I dreamt, dreamt about all my life. And those days, years ago, um, they would have like, um, you could come and have a cup of tea and meet casting. Yeah. So after months and months of plugging with the agent, I got in, I got in finally from being that little tiny girl to at 16 going in and meeting James Bain and Susie Bruffin, the casting directors in them days. And you know them. Do you oh, know all? Yeah, I know James. I know Susie yeah, was there yeah. and James and there was somebody else in the room, probably a younger uh, assistant yeah. casting. And, um, and we had the meeting. And then at the end of the meeting, they said, um, well, that's great. You know, we'll give you a call. We'll bring you back and we'll bring you in for some. And in those days, it was called extra work. Yeah. They're all supporting artists now. And uh, I, the look on my face was just... I was like, what? Because I, I, I just thought, no, I'm here. Like I've dreamt about it all my life. I'm here and I'm telling you I can do it. So I just in my head thought, no, they'll know. Yeah. And when they said extra work, I just went, oh, oh no, no, that's not why I'm here. That's, I, that's not what I want to do. And it ended up in the papers at the time because I said, I, I'll play a green elephant with wings, but as long as I speak, you know. And apparently James <laughs> Bain, um, I mean, I went to James's funeral not long ago, a few years ago, and he gave me my break in life. And apparently at the funeral, they said he had a picture of you. Oh, oh beautiful. I know it's making me cry now. Yeah. He yeah. had a picture of you on his notice board. Really beautiful. Until he died. Yeah. You know, and, and Michelle, it's these connections that we make in life. Yeah. Are actually really, really important to us because... Mm -hmm. It's these knowings that actually, yeah. um, when you so forcefully believe in something yeah. for you and you're able to project it out to people, other people start to believe that as well. And, and you yeah. are you are sprinkling that magic gold dust, aren't you? Because yes. people see it and they feel it. And, and yeah. it is that essence of what you feel from somebody. I really do yeah. um, believe that and relate to that. Yeah. And mm. yeah, James was a, a beautiful man now. Just he for the background. Yeah for people who are listening. Now, I, I used to work at Granada. I, I managed to join Granada just as a, um, a, a junior secretary when I was 19 and sort of worked my way through the ranks there um, and grew up there. You sort of grew grow up yes. really. Oh, it was a wonderful Granada. place, wasn't it? And back in the day, uh, I don't know what it's like now, but back then, it, we, you know, we've got the old school, which is now uh, the St. John's Hotel, isn't it? And, and then we have yeah. the car park, you know, so we've got the old school and it was a beautiful... That was the pub, it was like the pub across from Granada the Studio. The across, the, yeah. The Annie, Annie's on my Facebook, Annie Giles Quinn. Oh, she ran the old school, you know Annie, don't I you? I know, yeah, absolutely. Um, and what um, a buzzing place that was to yeah. be, to relax in. Yeah. Uh, you know... For all the Coronation Street lot as well, you know, because obviously you were you, you were in the Coronation Street as well, weren't you? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, you've been in so many things that I think, you know, Granada really is like your your second home to a certain extent 100%. as well. Yeah. Beautiful place to be and to grow up in in our working yeah. lives. So, however, we never met when we were working there, <laughs> were we? we? Do you remember meeting me? No, no never. No, we didn't. No. We didn't meet. Um, Did you work on the practice? No, no, because Sita Williams obviously did the yeah, practice. No, I did children's ward with Sita, um, yeah, and then I did the street, um, many right. years later, um, yeah. with, with Sita, um, and Vincent and those type of things. But no, we, we never actually met, although I knew you were in the building and you were doing things, um, yeah. but we, we our paths just never crossed. But of course, yeah. then we 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 got in touch through we bumped into each other, yoga, didn't we? Pilates, yoga, <laughs> yeah, yoga. Yeah. yeah so it's amazing isn't it how this how we've ended up being such good friends now run yes. meeting in a yoga class, class yeah. and me just popping over and saying hi 
yeah seemed yeah. the right thing to do to come and say hi and yeah. you know you know what a really yeah. big friendship i love it yeah. so it's amazing how things sort of work out and these other weird moments of knowing now you did touch on at the very beginning of this there have been times where you've not followed through because something didn't feel right are you able no. to expand on what well, not necessarily maybe in too much detail what that might be that's up to you but yeah. how did you know well I just got that's your gut instinct isn't it when you think that something isn't right mm. and don't get me wrong I don't always get it right and I don't know whether it's to do with that you get older um you take more things on yeah. I think you know like my granddad passing away affected me greatly it was more like my dad he brought me up um and I felt that from that point maybe I lost my gold dust maybe I didn't believe in myself as much maybe he was maybe he was the person that put that spark and that you, you know what I mean and I think there's sometimes where you push too hard yeah. the wrong way and I think there's a film about that is it uh, is it Dr Dyer or one of those forward thinking guys he can't remember the name of the film there's quite a well-known film about that it's almost about pushing things and not and and going with the flow right I don't remember. know that one perhaps you listen pop that I, in I, for us and let us pop know pop it in after yes um i did have it on dvd and i lent it to somebody um so i think that you can sometimes push things mm. in life which i've done that we all do it i think we've all done that yes and then you go i shouldn't have done that so that's something that you learn and then there's the gut feeling where you instinctively know that maybe that's not right. So as for when I was 16, mm -hmm. um, I got into Salford Tech to do film drama mm -hmm. after going to see its workshop. And I went for the opening day and I just didn't connect with anybody. I didn't, it didn't feel right. And there I am. I've got the, I've got the part. I've got, not got the part. I've got, I'm in. Yeah. I'm going for two years to do a foundation course in drama and then probably would have gone on to drama school and I got there and just went no nope, not for me and it wasn't theatre workshop it just I don't know what it was mm -hmm. my gut feeling went no I went home because I was living at my nan and granddad's then and they weren't happy nobody was happy yeah. everybody told me I was mad in fact so much so that obviously when you're 16 you leave school in them days you used to go on the dole didn't you yeah, yeah. and my nan took it off me she took the money off me and only gave me a certain amount or whatever and my bus fares. So that's how angry. Right. But I was so determined that I knew instinctively it wasn't right for me. I went, okay, that, that didn't stop me. And then my nan worked for British Rail on the trains. Mm. Used to do the ticket issuing between Oldham and Rochdale, uh, Manchester and Rochdale. And she'd write, I'm going to get you a job on the trains. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not. And she's like, well, you're not living off the dole. And, mm. and within, oof, I mean, literally days, weeks. I was in the practice, the series for two years um, at Granada when I met Jane. So I met James and said, I'll play a green elephant with wings. Yeah. Apparently when I walked out the office, they went, that girl will go far. <laughs> uh, they knew in their heads that there was a, a, a part coming up. And there's another story about that because my nan was, a, was into spiritualism and used to go to spiritualist churches. Ah. Now my nan died when I was 21. So although we did talk about it, it wasn't in depth no. because that's something that I kind of, I'm, I'm into all that kind of stuff. But you probably um, weren't then, maybe. I, I kind of was, but I was just coming, you know, I was growing up. I was yeah. coming into sort of things and maybe not at that age when everything's like that. You yeah. don't start going for that down that other route, do you? Yeah. Um, but my nan had sent me and um, Sue Devaney, who's also a Rochdale actress, yeah. to this spiritualist man who was in Rochdale. And it was like at the bottom of Bailey Street. In my head, it's like right in the town centre, yeah. like at the bottom of Bailey Street, somewhere like that. Yeah. And there was a door, a little door you went in. And I think we gave him a pound or 50p, might even have been 10p. I don't know how much it was, but it felt like a pound or something yeah. in them days. And we gave him the money and he was a very, very old man. And he was talking away to somebody, nobody. There was nobody in the room, but he's talking away to somebody. Didn't really take in, I don't have any memories of anything else that he said, but at the end he said, do you want to ask me any questions? And I said, yeah, what am I going to do when I leave school? Knowing in my head what I wanted to do. And he started going, yeah, what, yeah, what, right, yeah, yeah. And then turned around to me and said, you make a very good doctor's secretary. At which I was just like, oh God, really? 
like I'd, I've got this dream that's like that's not it and at the end of my nan's road was Wellfield surgery in Rochdale which was a really big surgery and I thought oh I bet I bet I get a job I'll probably end up working there didn't think anything of it go for this audition the new series at Granada the practice and I'm at, come back home and I'm sat there and I just got goose pimples all over me because the job that I'd gone for was to play the junior receptionist in the practice. And it was at that point I knew I was going to get the job. It had gone down to me and somebody else for the screen test. I've got goosebumps now. And, and I, I just knew, I just, I thought, oh my goodness, this is it. Of course, it's a doctor's secretary and I'm going to get it. And I did. And that was the That's, beginning of I love, my journey. I absolutely adore stories like this. So what about all the other roles that you've got? Have you had these sort of connections to any of, you know, good night, sweetheart or anything else like that? Or is this, has it progressed yeah. into something else, these sort of knowings? Um, I know it's, I sometimes, I more often than not kind of know I'm going to get a job or I get a feeling or I can even get it from the phone call sometimes, you know, and think I'll get that. Don't know why. Did that with Goodnight Sweetheart. My agent ran and I just thought, I'll get that. And I don't know why. It's not about being who do I, you know, who do you think you are or any of that. It's just a feeling. And then there's other times where, yeah, I just know it's a feeling whether you feel you connect to the character more. Yeah. You feel like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Um, and then there are a lot of times, <laughs> don't get me wrong, <laughs> there are a lot of times where you go, nope, I'm not going to get that job you know yeah and a lot of times that you might be quite pleased about that or not what pleased that I've not got the job mm. no again I'm very um um I believe in what will be will be you know oh, it's meant to be so yeah, I don't there's any job that I've not got that I've no I just have a belief that that's not down for you yeah you know I love it so thank you for that Michelle so for anyone who is thinking of perhaps getting into the business um, and at any age, because I know I know a few people now who are, you know, in the 50s and they're, they're just transitioning completely into, you know, wanting to get on into 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 jobs in TV and film uh, or for young people who are just coming out of uni or school, whatever. What advice would you give them knowing what you know now? It depends what area of the business they want to go in, because like if you're art department, I think you have to go and get, you, you know, mm. six, you I don't even know if you need a degree in, uh, you know, art and design. And so it depends what you want, I suppose, what you want to do. Um, as an actor, I would do probably what I've done, which is join local groups, work your way up to the best group that there is around. Um, lots of theatres, like maybe like Bolton Octagon have theatres, mm. Oldham Coliseum, you know, I'm sure all the theatres, um, Royal Exchange or whatever they'll all have youth theatres mm -hmm. which will audition people and um yeah and, and and through those you'll probably be filtered through to agents then won't you'll get an agent yeah. then obviously there's the process of doing that and then doing your um like going to Salford Tech doing drama going to drama school I didn't do any of that um I, there was an agent attached to Oldham Theatre Workshop so people were cherry picked out yeah. So although there'd be a core cast on stage of about 200 of us, huge crowd scenes, and we put shows on at all the, like, old, you know, like yeah. Oldham Coliseum, uh, the Royal Exchange, um, the one in Manchester, the Withenshaw Forum and all that kind of stuff, yeah. um, Contact Theatre and all that. There was, the, there'd be people that cherry picked for a smaller, you know, mm. smaller, a smaller group on the stage that had the speaking parts. Yeah. Okay. So, and then, and then we'd, we'd, um, those people would then the agent would approach them mm. so how has life affected you throughout lockdown and coming out now into this new world that we're in and and moving forward with it all because it obviously everything came to a standstill particularly for you know anyone who was attached to tv and film yeah we were the first to go we're literally the first week our business was the first theaters everything because yeah. we work so close so we I think were I think we were the first weren't we on the news I think so. that went um so shock I was in shock real shock I mean I wasn't working at the time so it wasn't like I'd lost a job 
but it was just like a shock. I mean, like you can imagine that's, well, mate, you can't not talk about Ukraine, can you, what's going on at the moment, but there's no, I mean, it's not the same thing, but no. life-changing, yeah. life-changing. We had no idea what was going on, did we? We had no idea how bad it was. Yeah. We had no idea how sick people were gonna get yeah. at that point. So I think for me, more than that point is what's going on in the world. Yeah. What's happening? How dangerous is this? Yeah. Um, probably not so much worried. But then, yes, of course, as, as the days and the few weeks then came by is how am I going to live and eat? Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do? And then obviously, bit by bit, all the other it, that we, we, we all slowly shut down, didn't we? Yeah. And then we heard that the government were going to support us, which was yeah. just bizarre because I'd supported myself since being 16. Yeah. How did that feel? Um, well, I, lucky, I suppose. Mm. Lucky. I felt lucky that, yeah, because I know that there were people much worse off. Mm. People got very sick. People lost family. People died. So, um, you know, um, and, and my sister's husband got cancer during the lockdown. He uh, got myeloma, broke his spine. He's a triathlete. So that was a shock. Yeah. you know this means so I, I, I suppose I just felt I can pay my bills and eat so I'm okay what more do I need yeah. I don't need any more than that so I, I didn't think about it no. really I didn't no. think any more no. just and I think that... everything just came back down to the basics of life really didn't it and just yeah. the survival mode that we've all been in for for so long and of course now like you said with Ukraine and and, yeah. and everything that's going on over there we're we're watching it play out in a very very different way but survival mode again for, for unbelievable yeah. i just watch in awe i mean i've gone to bed every night this week crying every night mm. um i've not even switched it on today I've, i just have had to have a day off because it's just i feel helpless i feel i have no idea i get and i've got angry i've got angry i'm cooking my tea in the kitchen i want to shout at, of course you do you want to shout at putin for what he's doing you know um yeah, and I, I felt myself boiling up and getting angry and I don't know how to get rid of this, what to do with it. And I live on my own. So it's not like I can banter a conversation yeah. with somebody as I'm cooking tea. I'm I'm just feeling helpless. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, thank you for mentioning that, because I think there are thousands of people out there who are probably feeling the same right now, you know, and, yeah. and it, it, but it goes on top of all of the feelings. When you're watching a village it, push yeah well, when you're watching that village pushing the trucks and that's all they've got is their hands yeah. do you know what I mean and they're pushing that truck and asking them to go back it's just like I'm in absolute awe of those people I mean I, it's just I would never thought I would see anything like that in my lifetime ever well, it's in our own living rooms, isn't it? You know, although it's thousands of miles away, actually, it's not. We're, we're seeing it and feeling it as if it's on our own streets because that's yeah. the that's the force of, of what the media can bring to us now. It yeah. is like living it inside. Yeah. But I think also that emotional turmoil that we're feeling, we are actually able to help. If we can help transition that into a more positive frame of mind to help the people who are over there actually going through the physical atrocities of it being an energy worker myself I know that we can balance as much as possible that energy out into some sort of calm eventually because I think the awareness of what is actually going on around the world people do not want war people don't want this conflict they don't want any of this aggro anymore we want a peaceful life we want to be able to get on and support each other and, and i'm hoping that i mean this is my personal view that that now that we are so much more aware of because of the pandemic and what we're seeing across the world the compassion that we're actually having of community to support each other is just naturally coming out now despite yeah what any of our leaders want yeah. us to do when yeah. we see russian sh soldiers ha ha over in ukraine giving themselves up and being offered crying a tea by and crying people and, and the crying. ukrainians are giving them bringing them in and we're giving them a cup we, of tea we feel that we understand that that could be our yeah. brothers and fathers yeah. and, you know just yeah. crossing. you know it'd be like it'd be like it happening at the other side of manchester in didsbury and yeah rochdale very you know it's like whoa no actually there are our brothers, sisters, yeah. cousins. Yeah. You know, we yeah. that compassion that we're feeling, that support, whatever we can do, 
do tune in folks because there are lots of energy techniques and things that you can be using and helping yourselves with to clear those emotions so yeah a link in underneath where if you need any support then please do get in touch because it's not just myself that i know lots and lots of people here who can yeah. help out with that type of support yeah. so moving on yeah Michelle, one last question before we yeah. go because it's just been a delight to spend this time with you who would you like to hear, see on the weird world of knowing and why? I can only think of my favourite actor, which is Harrison Ford. <laughs> oh, yes, please. please. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you've caught me totally off guard. But if it's not Harrison Ford, who I'd love to meet, I like the quiet, silent type, you know, the kind of difficult, uh, that kind of, I think he's just a brilliant actor as well. Yeah, no, I'd have liked to have had a drink with Joan Rivers as well. Oh, gosh, that would that have been you know, a loud, raucous one, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, she was just, to me, one of the funniest women. Yeah. So, Michelle, I can't thank you enough. It's been an absolute delight to spend some time with you. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you all next week. Take care. Thank you so much for listening on The Weird World of Knowing. I do hope you enjoyed your time with us. I'm Rachel Neering, your host. And gosh, I'm having a ball putting all of this together for you. So I hope you are too. And if you are, please do like, subscribe and share with those who might actually benefit from these weird moments of knowing as they realise how many of their own they've been having all their life. Take care and we'll see you next week.